Welcome back to uh, Health Hangouts with Amanda. Uh, this is uh, today's edition is with uh, Petra Debo, and this this process here. Um, what we're trying to do is release a video every single day to spread strength, hope, and love to people who uh, don't know how to ask for help or they're struggling. Uh, we do know that people are struggling in a variety of different ways, and so what we're attempting to do here is to just connect with other people in the in various communities across Canada and see what they're doing, see how they're affected. And so Petra uh, comes to us today from a friend of hers who told her about the videos. And uh, I've never met Petra. I've uh, heard a little bit about her. But yeah, so Petra, welcome. Um, Thank you. I, I, because I don't know a lot about you. I'd love for you to just introduce yourself and, and share like what you do for work, who you are. If you want to share where you live, that's fine. And, uh, and then I'm just going to jump in with a bunch of questions. All right. So I am Petra Debo, and um, I um, am originally from Sweden. So if I uh, say something funny, that's because <laughs> I've only spoken English for 20 years. Uh, so my grammar and uh, sometimes I just say funny things. Um, and I, I like to be made fun of for that, too. So I'm totally OK with that. Oh, we might have some fun. <laughs> yeah, that's great. You have a good sense of humor then. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I live in Lethbridge and I work in the um, social services field, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, wonderful. So, so why don't we start then with, uh, well, I'll start by saying thank you for volunteering your time to be here today. Um, it's, uh, it's a great thing when someone steps up and, and they're willing to put themselves out there, right? Um, so that being said, what was it like for you to put yourself out here, especially considering that you don't really know me at all? No. Um, well, I was just told about this and asked if I would be interested. And I said, sure. And I think during these times that we're in right now, I, I really think it's important to pull together and do what we can to support each other. And mm -hmm. um, just having this chat with you is making it's my way of giving to the to the communities in in Canada or in the world, I guess. I don't know yeah, where yeah. this will take us, but yeah. Yeah, for sure. Well, I'm super grateful that you're here. Uh, and it's really helpful on my end too, because you know, trying to get a hundred videos in a row is certainly a challenge. Uh, one that was harder than I thought. <laughs> but I'm like, I am committed to making this happen. So, so it's super helpful. So thank you for being here and your interest and for being brave, right? Um, so let's maybe start with um, with your professional life. Uh, so you say you work in the social services field, and um, I don't know if if you are working at home or kind of what that looks like now and how you've been affected professionally by um, the COVID pandemic. So we were going through some changes actually just before the COVID hit. So we were already having some uh, big changes, but obviously now uh, we are working from home. So I work for uh, family and community support services. So we have a variety of different services. We provide uh, family services, so parenting, education and support, uh, play programs, parent education programs. Uh, we have counseling, uh, group counseling, and we also have senior supports and volunteer services. Uh, so obviously we can't do any of that face to face anymore. So mm -hmm. our um, I am the, the manager of the family services uh, department and my team has been incredibly creative from home and reaching out to families in our communities, making videos, they're um, uh, singing songs for children, reading books or self care videos, all kinds of things. And then um, just phone services and I'm, um, as a manager, my role is mostly admin anyway. So for me, working at home hasn't really been a big shift. Um, mm -hmm. I can do pretty much every, anything from home. I think the biggest shift is uh, not being, meeting your coworkers and, and having a social life and being out in the community, driving around or um, doing things. So it's been, that's been tough actually. Uh, I didn't, um, realize until this ha I thought I was an introvert and that I liked being at home but I mm -hmm. do not uh, I like to be out and socialize and meet my co-workers and being out in the community and meeting friends and all that mm -hmm. so that's 
uh, that it's been the first two weeks, I have to admit, it was really, really hard not having my routine and going to work mm -hmm. and um, yeah, that kind of things. So after the first two weeks, so now we're, we're in week four, I guess. Well, I guess I'm, I'm not entirely sure when you came we, home because I'm in week yeah. four or five we, now. I think I'm on week seven, actually. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. I'm trying to look. Uh, yeah, six for six for sure. Okay. And so you said the first two weeks were really tough. And then what changed for the third week? Um, so I think I did a, a little bit of just feeling sorry for myself and grieving. And, um, and then I, I, I think just effort, putting some effort into creating new routines and um, seeing the positive in the situation. So one positive that I'm very, very happy about, and I hope that I will be able to continue when this is over is that mm -hmm. I've had more time to go for walks and exercise. Um, I have, I have uh, two, two teenage girls and they're very, very busy. So often I come home from work, or I work late and mm -hmm. then it's just running and running around and um, I get home at nine o'clock and eat and go to bed. So this has been really nice um, that I've had more time to do things that I en enjoy doing and maybe some things that I forgot that I enjoy doing. Mm -hmm. Isn't that interesting how, you know, we get into that, that, that grind, you know, they call it the nine yeah. to five grind or whatever. And, and then we're working overtime because we have to, because we have this team that we're managing and, and we can forget what's really important. Yes. Yeah. Right. And, and it's like, I wonder for you why that happens because it's different for, for others, but why, like, this is more a philosophical question maybe, but like, why do we forget what's important? I, because we don't stop or I, I'm speaking for myself. I didn't, mm -hmm. I don't stop and think, and I kind of like being busy and I'm single. Um, you know, that can get boring sometimes. So I, I like to just keep busy and, mm -hmm. um, yeah. Mm -hmm. But I was feeling a real loss or I was feeling lost. I just said, not a loss necessarily, but feeling lost those first two weeks. I just didn't know what to do with myself or even at work. Mm -hmm. I was just not, um, energetic or, um, enthusiastic about doing my work. It was just feeling, uh, and then. Mm -hmm. Once I found some, just thinking of the positives, I guess, was what, just switching my mind mindset of, okay, what is good about this? What, what can I make out of this? That's what right. really, really helped me. And was there something that really, like, so, you know, we get into what we might call a uh, depressive state and then like, what shifted for you? How did you know? And it's like, okay, let's start looking at the positives from this, like, this place of, I don't know what to do with myself. What changed for you? How did that happen? I don't know. That's a good question. I think I was just, I, I don't know. You know what? A little bit maybe um, Facebook. So I'm, uh, I have a friend, his name is Matthew. And actually you should, you should interview him. Um, I'd love uh, to. <laughs> I'd love to. Please get him to text me. For sure. Like we will set it up. Absolutely. I, I will. Uh, well, he created this uh, uh, fun time group, COVID fun time group on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And we were just, just about fun things. So silly things sharing and it's, it is growing. But I think that one day I was just, you know, everybody seems so positive and this is just, you know, I need to change my attitude. But that, that Facebook group really helped me to just, the first two weeks to just, you know, I don't know, get used to the new and all the, you know, the silly things people were posting and mm -hmm. um, yeah, working in pajamas, you know, somebody <laughs> would say, oh, I actually got dressed today, you know, you know, the kind yeah. of just, yeah, keeping it um, light. And I think that's what actually made me, okay, what can I do to change this for myself? Mm, beautiful. Um, Something that you mentioned at the very beginning of this interview is mm -hmm. it's been tough to not be able to, to see coworkers, go out with coworkers or have a social life. Um, can you tell us more about that process for you, how you've navigated the difficulty of that? Um, 
just staying connected via uh, social media, Zoom. I have a, a Zoom account, so I've actually had a few Zoom visits with friends, mm -hmm. uh, inviting people to go for walks, um, walking outside. Yeah, and I, I also wake up every morning now, not the first two, three weeks, uh, but now mm -hmm. and make a con conscious decision who I'm going to reach out to today. You know, mm -hmm. somebody that, um, that I might have not talked to in a long time and just, yeah, send a message or give them a phone call. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, what, what I'm noticing, even for myself, and I'm, I'm noticing other people talk about this, is that we are now connecting more with friends that we normally don't talk to very much because yeah. we're so busy all the time. And now it's like, well, okay, who am I going to chat with today on, on video conference? And it's like someone I haven't seen in 10 years, actually. Yeah. Um, I interviewed Kim Siever. I don't know if you know who he is, but uh, I do. He, lives, he lives in Lethbridge actually also. And so I interviewed him and I've known Kim for, for a decade and, uh, but I haven't seen him in, nine or 10 years. And so I just called him up and I was like, Hey, do you want to do this interview? And so it was just fascinating. It was so cool to, to see this guy that I knew 10 years ago. And I've heard about since then, you know, but, um, but actually be able to have a one-on-one, -on -one, um, personal conversation with him. So it was great. And some friends that I talked to, you know, maybe once a year because I, I can't, can't visit them or whatever it is. Now we're doing like games nights, like friends games nights where these people from wherever in Canada or the world are coming and we're like, wow, like that was pretty cool. It still lacks the, you know, when you have a, uh, a fun party at a house, you know, whether it's a games night party or whatever, it still lacks that, that, you know, getting up and going into the kitchen and having a side chat with someone or, you know, it, it lacks that, but it's still, yeah. it's fascinating to see how people are coming together that normally wouldn't talk to each other very yeah. much so yeah. i wonder if, if if that's similar to your experience it is yeah and actually uh i posted uh, this weekend on social media asking where i could find rocks and i just had like an amazing response not just on facebook but people were calling me texting oh, okay. me yeah. emailing me this is where you can find rocks and i was just like wow like who knew <laughs> that rocks could bring you know so much engagement but it was yeah. Uh, yeah are you working on a project where you need rocks i needed to uh fill a skunk hole yeah i've had some issues with skunk for the last few months yeah yeah yeah, yeah okay and, and and yeah you're right you just put it out there and so many more people are engaging digitally because that's what we have in front of us yeah um <laughs> One question I have that goes back to what you said a little bit, a little bit ago is this, like the change that you noticed came from a pause. Oh, I can't hear you now. <laughs> How about now? Yeah, there we go. <laughs> That, that might happen once or twice in this interview, but, um, you know, you were as a Facebook user or a social, um, social media user, how do you navigate the other side? Because we have a bunch of stuff on Facebook and Instagram also. That's like, like, this is. Oh, now I'm missing you again. Just give it another five seconds and it'll come back. Oh, there it is. There it is. So I missed some of that what you said there. Sorry. No, that's okay. I'm going to try. We might want to try and like turn our video off to see if it'll catch up. If, if you do lose me like that, um, we can try oh, okay. that. Um, sometimes that works. Yeah. As a, as a social media user, how do you navigate the other side when you have a lot of stuff that's being posted that's scary for a lot of people? right? Like there's, you know, in the news and it's like a lot of doom and gloom. Um, so we have all the really positive and then we have the doom and gloom. And how do you work between those two things? Or, or do you read the doom and gloom? What's that like for you? I'm actually really good at um, deflecting or ignoring. I don't know what the word is. Um, 
not paying attention to things that mm -hmm. I don't want to see. But to be honest with you, I don't have a lot of that. Um, and if there is something that bothers me, I usually unfollow it. So it's mm -hmm. not in my face. And I think actually that's really important. And it's something that I've learned to do that things that bother me, just take a distance and or yeah, unfollow. That's what mm -hmm. I do. But I also am a type of person that I can just glance over it and it's not bothering me. Mm -hmm. Do you find that there's any, any value in in the newscasts that that you do see on uh, Facebook or or on TV or whatever, like, is there, you know, some people have said to me, well, you know, one hour a day, like, I'll look at the news and the other 23 hours, I, that's my boundary, you know, like, I can't because it, it's too hard for me. Do you have any boundaries around that for listening to the news and, and keeping up to date on what's happening? Yes, I do. I, um, I listen to like once a day for sure, but my schedule is not always the same, but I try to listen um, to the news in the morning. Um, and then, or at six o'clock, that's kind of my routine, but that that's it. I really try to not bog myself down with that. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I'm just, uh, I'm gonna have to turn off my virus scanner because I'm just mindful that it might lag us further. Ah! So turn it off and then it turns itself back on. Stop it. <laughs> Make this good. Anything else that pops up, I'm like, off, oh, off. Oh. <laughs> but see, there it goes again. Oh my goodness. It just does not want to stop. So uh, any, but you know, I called Shaw and they said it's, it's lagging because there's so many people in your community who are using it. And, oh. um, and I can't get my virus counter to stop. So I don't know what to do. If it causes us problems, it's just going to cause us problems. Because I've shut it off four times now. Yeah, it is what <laughs> it's it doing is. Its job. It's doing its job. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I love I love the boundary piece around this because what I'm finding too is that the doom and gloom that we're seeing, um, I'm I'm gonna say is really negative um, negatively affecting people, and I say that because they have um, I work as a counselor. I talk to a lot of people, so I yeah. have a lot of background knowledge on on what's happening for people right now. But not everybody, right? What I'm finding is that if people do set boundaries around this stuff, then they can take responsibility for their needs in terms of their mental health and emotional stability. And that's what I'm hearing that, that you're doing because it, it would make sense that you set boundaries to support yourself. But, but I, I should ask instead of assume, why did you set those boundaries for yourself? I don't think he was even, it's not even conscious. Maybe it is. Or maybe I'm just not interested to <laughs> know all about, I don't know. Or maybe, yeah, I don't know. What? It's just something that I've always kind of done when there is a tragedy or something happening in the world. I mm -hmm. try to minimize or just, you know, get the Im information that I need to have and, and leave it at that. Yeah, I'm similar to that. I've always kind of, most of my life I've been made fun of and, been asked a lot of questions about like why don't you know why don't you ever read the newspaper or why don't you ever watch the news or why don't you th this and that and I, I keep saying to people you know what if if it's going to be something that I need to know about I'm going to know about it yeah. and and I I do educate myself on things that I can you know perhaps affect change toward but for for me to read about horrible things that are happening to people around the world and not be able to do anything about it. I, you know, I, that's not helpful for, yeah, for my mental health. Right. And, um, I used to be really interested in, well, I would argue that I still am, but, um, like crime documentaries and things like that. But, but even that it's like, Oh, I'm trying to understand like, Oh, the mind of a criminal or a mind of a murderer or whatever. But, but it's the same kind of thing that after a while, it just, it, it becomes too much and we have to, yeah. we have to put it down, you yeah. know, we have to put it down to, to help ourselves. So, so I've gotten to a point where, you know, I have these, some friends who are very like, like very politically uh, inclined and they will read everything and they'll know everything and they want to tell you exactly where you're wrong and this and that. And it's like, okay, well, that's you. 
and this is me. I have no, yeah. I, I say, I'm like, I have no idea what you're talking about <laughs> right now. Can we just like go and watch this movie? <laughs> because I yeah. don't know what you're talking And now, okay, let's, you know, I'm not suggesting that I, that I have no understanding of um, any political things that are going on in the world. But it's just, we have to ask ourselves, like, what's actually valuable about this topic or yeah. this conversation or watching this news feed on um, Facebook? What's valuable here? Because anything that we engage in that is not valuable or potentially could be harmful for us down the road in terms of our mental health, if we continue to engage, then it's like, it's like, this might not be a, a you know, a great simile here, but you, you drop a penny into, you know, a bucket every time you engage in a behavior that, that is not helpful or could be harmful, you drop another penny or a dime because pennies don't exist anymore into a bucket. Eventually that bucket gets really heavy. And so after a while, when that bucket's really heavy, that's like, if we imagine our mental health carrying the weight of that, now it's really heavy. Yeah. And now we have a, a greater likelihood of falling into depression or greater anxiety, things like that, as a result of doing these things that aren't helpful to us. Yeah. So when someone says, why don't you watch the news? I say, because it's not helpful for me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I, and I, I think, I think I'm with you there too. And I also, I also think that I pay a lot of attention to when I do something, how it makes me feel mm -hmm. like, is it, is this giving me, is this, you know, if I'm feeling anxious, I, I kind of naturally just go, well, what, what did I just do? And kind of just evaluate how things make me feel but depending mm -hmm. on what it is but yeah I was watching you you mentioned um 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 crime what, what were you saying crime like uh crime crime documentaries yes yeah mm -hmm. so I, I like that kind of stuff too and I was um I was into Dexter I don't know if you've seen that show I have but, seen that show yeah but I started dreaming and having real like real anxiety dreams and I was you know getting into trouble and I was murdering people and I was like whoa okay well this is a sign that I maybe want to step back right <laughs> okay no more Dexter for me <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah yeah so it, it like creeps in in ways that we don't even recognize yeah right whether it's a show like Dexter which was a fascinating show and 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 um I can't even tell you how like the the reviews on that show or how many people watch that show you could find that number somewhere and i'm not that interested in it in the answer of that but but it, it was very popular right and, yeah. and at the same time we have this like this fascination with like how do people behave that way and how do people you know um and there was actually and i have a point to all Yeah, I can hear you now. How about now? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my virus scanner just continues to start. It just doesn't want to. Number seven now closed it. So I'm just going to stop. Um, but yeah, there was, I think it was Edmonton. And correct me if I'm wrong. I don't know if you ever heard about it, but there there was a guy who was um, actually at attempted to um, to hurt or, or, or kill another person as a result of being influenced by the show Dexter. And uh, it was unsuccessful, thank goodness. But, and I, th I think that was in Edmonton or somewhere, somewhere in Alberta. But, um, but the point here is that what we feed our minds with, we, we, we could be followed by. Like, yeah. our, uh, if that makes sense. Like, it's like, whatever, whatever we get connected to, uh, we will be influenced by in some form. That's the better way to say it, yeah. I think. Yeah, yeah. Right? And so For these sure. dreams that you're having, like you didn't have any control over that. They were, that was just happening, right? Um, and so, so you chose to step away then, so you weren't influenced in that way. And uh, and and that's that's something similar that I did a couple of years ago. I was watching too many crime documentaries, and I, I was kind of becoming um, just like emotionally unwell. And I was like, wow, like why do I feel so terrible? And of course, there's always other factors, right? But if we consider all these factors, especially like during this pandemic we consider if people are watching doom and gloom type shows or news and media that that bring us down or challenging for us 
and we're locked inside and we're in a situation where perhaps like if we live alone, for example, we're lonely um, or say we have kids running around or a child running around and we have to play these roles as uh, you know, we have our job, we're now a parent. I mean, obviously we're always a parent and, and now our teacher and that can, that adds to the stress, right? It's like yeah. everybody's world has changed. And then imagine that there, you know, there's people who uh, are in uh, relationships or marriages that are really challenging. Right. And then you take perhaps all those, all these factors and you put them onto one person and then they're watching this doom and gloom stuff on top of that being influenced in ways they don't even understand. Yeah. So mm. now we have this, this um, kind of mushroom ballooning problem and people go, why do I feel so terrible? And this is one of those aspects. And I think this conversation is really valuable. It certainly is for me, but for those of you who aren't setting boundaries for yourself around the whatever you're intaking whether it's books or media or t like tv shows if you're not monitoring that that might be something to look at in terms of why we feel the way we do if you are struggling i mean what do you think about what i've said yeah i i totally agree with you and you you just like i just noticed too like i was out in the yard this this weekend and just doing things and slowing down and being more um I don't know, using my hands, it just shift my mentality. I just was feeling so great on Sunday. Like mm -hmm. I didn't, um, yeah, no, um, that's kind of was off topic of what you were saying, but I was just thinking of that and boundaries and kind of channeling us ourselves into things like, or maybe changing routines is hard. So kind of pushing ourselves and doing things that we might not enjoy all that much, but we know are good for us. I think that's, people are struggling with that. I struggle with that, but just, but once you do it, then you realize, oh, you know, that I feel so great. So I was, you know, I was um, uh, dreading taking care of these skunk, the skunk hole and um, doing all the yard work. It was just like, oh, but then when I was out there, it was just, I was feeling great. And afterwards, mm -hmm. I felt so accomplished. Yeah, it's like the first step, like that's the hardest part, right? Yeah, and, yeah. And, and I, I, I love that you said that because that's another thing that people can be doing, like get out of the house, right? Sometimes, yeah. you know, there's all these posts about, and believe me, like sometimes I wear my pajamas too. <laughs> because I can, you know, like that's, that's always kind of been my life working from home, but I have pants on today because I had to leave the house. But sometimes it is just like in my slippers and I put on a nice shirt and whatever. So there's my secret guys, you know, if you ever want to know if I'm in pajamas, you can just ask me to stand up and I'll show you. Um, but so I'm, I'm digging a hole for myself there, but no, yeah. my, my clients going to do it. Our clients know that we're we are so personable here, and uh, what what you all see right now is who I am in session. Also, just a bit quirky, and uh, yeah, if you want to see if I'm wearing pajama pants, you can just ask. But I actually have jeans on, but they're ripped today, and uh, I like ripped jeans, and I couldn't wear those to the office, and now I can wear them whenever I want to. That's great. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> Having a great day in ripped jeans. Um, but yeah, like getting outside and and. It, we can get into this habit of just laying watching tv you know and it's like it's like that can be very comfortable but also it's it's very sickening eventually yeah. right because we just like ah oh, like we feel i don't know about you but i just feel like this like it's like an internal like weight of of some kind it's like a darkness and i'm like ah oh, like i really wanted to do something different today and, and say it was a beautiful day out and I'm like, oh, I'm just wasting this sunny day where I could go for a walk around the block or I could do a jog somewhere or I could get in my car and drive somewhere or whatever. But instead, um, I'm sitting here watching this series, whatever it is, episode after episode after episode. And so getting outside and doing the things that we know that we want to do but don't want to do because we're fueling this, this stagnation that yeah. we can get so comfortable and so used to, even though we hate it at the same time, right? Mm -hmm. Can you yeah. speak to that at all? Um, the hate, well, I, so this is again, a little bit off topic, but I, another no, I thing that it. I- <laughs> Just take it wherever you want. 
<laughs> so another thing that I've kind of pushed myself to do, so I saw all these people doing sourdough bread. So I, I've never done so sourdough dough bread. And I was YouTubing it and seeing, you know, all the details about it. And I was like, oh, that's way too precise for me because I can barely follow a recipe. But anyways, I made the commitment of sticking through it and making this stupid sourdough yeah. starter. And, and yeah, and I, in the beginning, I was like, oh, I have to measure and all oh, this and I have to, you know, but now I'm actually in love with my little sourdough starter because I've spent so much time <laughs> and energy on this. And, uh, um, and it was, yeah, totally something I would never do when prior to the COVID because I wouldn't have time to do that. But um, yeah. that, that focus on that little item every day was, has been, I don't know if that was even remotely related to what oh, you were saying. It was awesome. It's, yeah, it's totally connected because mm -hmm. what you're doing is you're not allowing yourself to stagnate. Yeah. Right. Because in your understanding of like you're in mental health right and you run a team and you like it's, it's important like I'm biased but it's important work that we do and what happens when we stagnate right like we we become depressed uh yeah. we're not as productive we can't show up uh we don't know how to uh, actually step up and and be there for ourselves or be there for anybody else um, we become sometimes uh, paranoid or have heightened paranoia about things and uh, and then we just we fuel that by not changing the pattern right and so like going outside and doing these tasks around the yard and you said you felt great after I did yeah right that's amazing and then the sourdough thing like had this pandemic not happened I, and I know it's it's like it's a one thing it might not be significant at the time to you or it might not be significant to some some other people but it's like that one thing never would have happened I don't think no. would you have have learned how to do sourdough bread if you weren't stuck at home no I wouldn't have no <laughs> right and now you love it <laughs> and that's yeah. awesome that's that's the great thing so it's like yes there's this the black cloud looming over us and and we have you know a lot of things to worry about but we also have a lot of things to be, uh, and I don't mean to sound cliche, but we have a lot of things to be grateful for too. Um, you know, the other day I was, well, I guess it was maybe a couple weeks ago, I was running a group. We do these emergency um, support groups also. So running this group and, and somebody in the, in the group was just, was saying like, you can learn how to cook online. You can, <laughs> excuse me, you can do anything. You can do all kinds of things. Like you can learn Spanish, you can learn dancing, you can like everything is free right now. So, so you just looked up a recipe and you're like, well, I have the time to try this out. And now you found something that actually is um, like it's working. So the likelihood of you engaging in, in that, you know, recipe or whatever in the future is higher now because you've overcome that first step. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And that's fantastic. So I guess like my, my next question is, is where do you get stuck? So, uh, and what I, what I'm hearing Petra from you is that you're like, okay, how do we stay positive? And like, you know, I have these boundaries around Facebook and, and I think I'm doing really well for myself and I'm pushing myself to get outside and do different things and change my routine. And that sounds all really wonderful, but there are some people who likely are going to watch this video and say, well, how do I, how do I get unstuck if they are stuck, if they're in the spiral of like watching Netflix all day and they're getting depressed, what would be your advice for those people? Um, so I've, I've, I've had those moments where I just laying in bed and I don't want to get out and I kind of, mm -hmm. I kind of set a time limit for myself. That's usually what I do. Okay, I'm just going to really enjoy laying here in bed. Because mm -hmm. I think that's too, it's like sometimes when we do something that's, you know, you were using the word stagnant, we stop actually enjoying that too. It's not, it's not giving us any, you know, positive feelings. Anyways, um, by giving myself that a time and say, okay, in 20 minutes, I'm going to get up and I'm going to go and empty the dishwasher. And once you get going, that's usually me anyways. Once I get going, then I see all kinds of other things. And 
and it and it this sounds maybe cliche but i really work well with to do to do lists mm -hmm. so I set goals for myself so this is what i want to accomplish today so i'm waking up maybe feeling down and um having that list to refer back to kind of gets me going and and but it, it, that works for me that might not work for everybody because some people could get you know pissed off at list sorry mm -hmm. no that's okay that's okay <laughs> Yeah. And so, so it's really like setting boundaries for yourself and saying like, this is who I want to be today. And, yeah. and this is what I'm going to do today to be that person that I want to be. It's, I'm, I'm hearing that it's it, like, it sounds like you're saying, this is how to have integrity for self. Right. To self accountability to self and doing what we say we're going to do for self. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. So what was I, what was I, I was going to ask another question. It's like forgetting your locker combination when you're in high school and you like open it all the yeah. time. It's like, yeah. that just happened to me. This just happened to me. So yeah, the getting stuck piece and then stepping out and you said the to-do list piece. And I think that's, that's super valuable. Oh, I remember, I remember now um, the to-do list is, is super valuable. I have a sheet of paper right here. That's got scribbles all over it. And then once I scratch out stuff that I've done, I, put an X through it and I flip the page over and that's, that's how I manage my to-do list. Um, one thing that I've done for myself in setting boundaries is, is, is like limiting how many shows I watch. Um, and further from that, like I really like to finish a show <laughs> like, yeah. and then, and then when I, when I go to start another show, it's not halfway through. And so I had a bit of a, uh, a particularity is really is really what that is and like oh okay so i'll stay up like extra late to like finish the other half an hour of the show even if i'm exhausted so i can start a new show next time and i'm just like let go of that so any of these these particularities that i might be hanging on to a little bit i needed to let them go and be like well if i'm tired right now then i'm just gonna go to sleep and i'm not gonna like binge watch this show when i need to be doing something else like sleeping yeah or <laughs> If I'm having lunch and I'm watching my show because I enjoy doing that, then when lunch is over, it's not, uh, let's continue to binge watch this show all afternoon because I could, Yeah, I could, <laughs> but I also could be coming into this office and sitting down and saying, okay, who do I need to call? What things do I need to do? How many emails do I have to answer? Um, and in the first, first 14 days of, of having to be isolated at home, I did a lot of TV watching and, um, and now it's like, okay, so I'm eating lunch and I'll watch 30 minutes or, you know, sometimes it's less than that of a show. And then I close the computer and it's like, okay, this is done. When I open this, I'll start off from where I left off. And it doesn't actually matter whether it's the start of the show or the middle of the show, because it's all one big story, right? So I think that setting boundaries for ourselves and having integrity in, in terms of what we say we're going to do, we follow through with even though it has nothing to do with anybody else. Yeah. <laughs> this yeah. is about us and our sanity and our mental health. Um, but also I think it's, it's, um, it's like being, being able to, yeah. So the integrity piece, but being able to limit, right. So that's like setting a boundary and, but it's the getting started piece. That's the hardest. And I wonder for you, why you think that is for people. You can speak for yourself, of course, why getting started is the hardest. I, yeah, I don't know. It's just that, again, maybe we forget that we like it or we forget what it feels like. And it's just that, you know, you're so comfy in your pajamas. So, I don't know, getting, putting something else on to go out and do that or to, mm -hmm. maybe that's the big step. I don't know. And, and go you know, ahead. Uh, yeah, I remember when I was uh, staying at home with my young children and I maybe I stayed home for a little little too long and I started uh, like everything started to become a big project. Just going to the bank became this like, mm. that's what I have to do this week. But it became so big mm. that it was because I wasn't doing those things regularly or I'm not explaining it very well, but yeah, 
everything that was not in my day-to-day -day life, you know, making mm -hmm. lunch, breakfast, and dinner uh, to my children and, and playing with them and, and that, or taking them to their things, then anything outside of that became a chore or a big deal. So mm -hmm. it was almost like I had to prep myself for doing it. And, and I remember feeling once I did it, it was just like, oh, well, that wasn't so bad. That went quick. Mm -hmm. I can do that again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and what I'll add to that, Petra, if you're finished. Yeah. Yeah, what I'll add to that, I think, is is uh, we we get it's that comfortability, right? And we we're, we're creatures of comfort, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> in the true sense yeah. of the word. So if we are, you know, we find comfort or instant gratification in staying in our pajamas and watching TV all day or whatever it is, then the next day our brains go, Oh, well, that was really great. Like I want to do that again. And I can, because I don't have to go to work or I don't have to, you know, whatever. And then it becomes like this norm and it might take a really long time for it to become the norm, but it, it can, because we're, we're feeding the same pleasure centers in our brain over and over and over. And this is like the, the idea behind addiction, right? And only we're not talking about addiction. We're talking about habits. Right. So when we start to realize like, oh, wow, maybe we should try this other thing. And you really like making like sourdough bread or th this might change the way you operate in your kitchen. Right. Because you you fed your pleasure center in a different way mm -hmm. and you changed your pattern when you went out. You actually really enjoyed being outside, even though initially it's like, well, that's not going to be as fulfilling as doing this other thing. But it was. Right. So the message there that I'm hearing is even if you think that it might not be fulfilling, try it anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So try that's, yeah. really, that's just try it. And you might be <laughs> surprised, you know, like there, I went on, uh, like I used to run a lot and I don't, I don't run that much anymore, but I went on my first run in like a year, like a few weeks ago. And I was like, Oh, like, I really want to go. It's a beautiful day, but I don't want to go. And I'm just so comfy right now. And, um, I know this cycle all too well. And I did, I, I'm like, no, like get out of bed and put your running pants on. <laughs> and it's like, I talked to myself and I said, no, you were going to do this today. And then if you don't like it, you don't have to do it again. But yeah. if you, you know, and I had a great time. I put some great tunes in my ears and I ran up this mountain. Well, I walked up the mountain cause I was so out of breath, but walking up this mountain and by the time the hour was over and, and I was going home I just felt so much better so I was like okay I, and, and the more we can get into that in a in a healthy balanced kind of way the better our lives are going to unfold in front of us right because we are taking care of ourselves um, so that's really the message that I'm getting from from this conversation is there are things that you can be doing despite your circumstances um, but you have to actually do it you have yeah. to take some responsibility and, and do something different than what you're doing. Um, work for but I don't, it. I don't think it has to be big though. I think sometimes too, yeah. we set too high of goals for ourselves. So with my, I'm going to go back to my to-do list. Sometimes I make a to-do list. That's just so not even, you know, no way I will be able to do that all. Mm -hmm. And so kind of starting small, like just little things. Can Maybe. you give us some, I agree. Can you give some examples for the people who are watching? Um, well, just simple things. Today, I'm going to empty the dishwasher, like mm -hmm. very simple. Or um, maybe you have a big mountain of, of laundry, but just tackling, just doing one load, full, full, do, washing and folding one load. That's all you have to do today. Mm -hmm. And I my experience is when I do set, you know, say that to myself, then I get the energy and I, I do it all. But yeah. having the expectation of doing it all seems overwhelming. So if you say, okay, I'm just going to do one load and fold, then mm -hmm. once you get going, it's not that hard. And Wonderful. I love it. So like set, set smaller goals. You don't have this, this mountain of things you have to do today. You have one thing you're going to start with. Yeah, And then you see how you feel after that, because when people are really struggling with their emotions and mental health, it can be so excruciatingly difficult yeah. to do one thing. Well, yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah. 
And that's the, the kind of the, um, the advice we give parents to when they're struggling with disobedient children or just struggling with parenting. Pick one thing that is, you know, that would make your life a little bit easier and focus on that behavior or skill that you need your child to learn, whatever, just one thing and, um, and work on that. And when you succeeded with that, then you move to the next thing. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. So, um, so I'm getting the sense that we could probably naturally just close this conversation um, pretty quick here. Okay. Uh, but I, I am interested in if, if you could tie in a bow, uh, some advice for people who are struggling based on what you've talked about today. What's the, cause some people aren't going to listen to the whole interview. They're just going to go to the end and like, can't hear you nothing How about now yeah yeah no yeah. <laughs> yay i was trying to count down i was trying to like see if i could do it um yeah, what, what would be your summary? Because some people aren't going to watch the whole video. They're just going to go to the end and see like, what was the advice that was for today? I'm trying to kind of keep it pretty, pretty um, standard in, in how I outline these videos. But yeah, so what would be your tied in a bow kind of advice based on the conversation today for people who are struggling? So uh, I don't even remember everything we talked about because uh, my memory is not that great, but, um, and I don't even, so my number one thing, actually, I don't even know if I said it, but would be, don't be afraid to reach out mm. to whoever, if it's a, you know, a lost friend or uh, an agency that can provide services, a counselor, mm -hmm. anything. Um, other than that, um, do one thing, set a goal for yourself. Do one thing today, even if it's just getting out of your pajamas. Yeah, and, and even if you don't want to do it, do <laughs> yeah. it anyway. And what's super cool about us like doing these videos is we can actually, if anybody wants to participate in this, I haven't offered this yet, but we could say, be part of a challenge with us. Do one thing and tell us what you did. Yeah. Like you can type in the comments below this video and say like, okay, today was tough for me. And to combat that I did this. And after I felt this, so that can be the challenge is what's the one thing you're going to do today or that you have done today. And what was the outcome of that? Mm -hmm. um, because really the theme of what Petra and I have talked about today is, is that oftentimes like we can get into this grind and we forget what's important. Yeah. And, and Petra, I heard you say you're doing these things outside and in your kitchen and you're finding out how important they are. Right. And you're seeing bigger picture, you know, right. So do one thing. And if you do want to share with us what that one thing is, I would, I would challenge you to do, to do that because um, I have to do it too. Petra's doing it. I'm certainly doing it. There are days where it's really tough. It and uh, even as a, a seasoned mental health practitioner, it's tough. We're all human. Right. So if uh, if I do, I would love to see some participation. Uh, if you have any questions, you can type those. I'll answer you. I'll participate if you want. Um, but uh, but what's the one thing I did? What's the one thing I did today? Well, I put I put my ripped jeans on today, uh, which which I don't normally do. But I, I had to leave the house. But um, but I did that. And what else did I do today? No, I think that was that was probably the the one thing I did today that I often don't do because I'm I'm wearing slippers and pajamas most of the day. So that was my one thing, and it it facilitated me getting out of the house and doing what I needed to do. Today was a really hard day for me personally, and so getting out of the house and having the fresh air and I got I have this thing with like driving down the road and listening to loud music in my car. Um, oh, loud music! That's a good one. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. And so it helped me a lot to be able to get out of the house and deal with the things I had to deal with today. But uh, ultimately coming home and then um, seeing a, a few clients and then having this interview 
and um, have one more, you know, I'm just going to a meet and greet with somebody after this and then going to have dinner and uh, likely watch a show because I'm, I've been integral throughout the day and done what I plan to do today. And I'm going to allow myself to relax and, and watch a show and then have a good night's sleep and get up at a decent time in the morning. So it's having that schedule is something else, Petra, that you talked about and mm -hmm. the importance of boundaries and, and, you know, engaging in things that will be helpful for us uh, instead yeah. of, you know, harmful or stagnating for us. So, so I really, pay really pay attention to the feeling, how it makes pay you attention feel to the feeling mm -hmm. when you do that one thing. Yeah. Yeah. Watch it. And some people are really afraid of the feeling piece. Right. Um, but uh, when you say pay attention to the feeling, what do they, what do you want? What would you recommend they do with that? Just acknowledge it and remember, try to remember. And I think when we acknowledge it, so that made me feel good. My memory is going to remember it next time I have mm -hmm. to do it. That You know what? Yeah. Remember, Petra, that made you feel good. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. And then we change those cycles um, in our brains in terms of the stagnation that can happen when we allow ourselves to, to stay stuck in TV watching or, or whatever mindless activity we might be doing. Yeah. Um, so that's great. Uh, Petra, thank you very much for the time again today. It was, uh, it was an awesome conversation. I really felt, felt really engaged and I learned some things from you. And what I love most about this is like, I don't know you. I know. <laughs> I don't know you. And, and we still talk for over an hour today, yeah. just, just a, a, about what's happening here. And you brought your own personal gifts and understanding about your own life. And that was really brave. And I guarantee you there'll be somebody out there who uh, who really listens to that and, and grows from it. Um, maybe a lot. We, we never know. But we have put out a challenge there. Put in the notes, like, what's the one thing that you can do? And uh, Petra, if anybody was interested to actually talk to you, like, personally, after watching this video, is it okay if I forward correspondence to you? Yeah, sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you can email me if you have questions for Petra or want to connect with her um, because you've appreciated her message. That's more than welcome here for sure. Um, and then, yeah. And also Petra, this is for you, but also for anybody else who, who's listening. If you know of anybody who is interested to join the conversation here, um, let me know, email me. Uh, or if you know my cell phone number, you can text me. Uh, but yeah, the more the merrier, because we are going to keep releasing these videos every single day. And if I run out of people, I'm going to release one just with me and I'm not sure how this is going to go. So like, come on guys. <laughs> like, um, yeah. So I would love to, I'd love to hear from people. And then usually videos are posted about, uh, about a week later after they're recorded. So, so Petra, it's been really great to meet you and you never know, maybe we'll talk oh. again at some oh. point. Oh, and there's the cat. And that's a, <laughs> that's a super common thing that happens with cats as many people who are using zoom or some video conferencing now, no, because cats have to be the center of attention. And yes. That is yeah. okay. <laughs> She's mad that I'm not letting her out. So I'm going to have to go do that. <laughs> there you go. Cool, Petra. Well, thanks for everything. Um, Thank you. If, if you need anything. And then the link will be up in, in the next seven days at some point. Um, but yeah, perhaps we'll be in touch again. And if not, well, thank you so, so much. Thank you. All, All right. right. Take care. Bye-bye.